All right, <clears throat> quick update on the aquaponics setup here. Um, everything seems to be doing well. I'm keeping charts on my water. Water's crystal clear. Um, testing pH, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. Uh, I've been doing it every two days. Um, <clears throat> I think because I'm, you know, impatient or something. <laughs> Just eager to get going. Uh, seems to be working out all right. All my, my uh, ammonia is low. It's like five parts per million. I have zero nitrite. Uh, and I believe the nitrate was a 0.5 parts per million, so it's fairly low. It's like the first or second bar on the chart. And the pH is running a little bit alkaline still. It's about somewhere between 7.6 and 7.8. I <clears throat> can't really get a, a good reading on it because the test kit I have has low pH, high pH, and that happens to be right where the break point is, uh, 7.6. So, anyway, cucumbers are doing pretty good. They all have secondary leaf buds on them. Um, we had a week of rain last week, so it was very cloudy, and uh, the plants are doing much better now that they got some sun. The basil over here is definitely holding on. And this is lettuce. These lettuce are doing well. This one, not so good. I think it got pinched by a bead. Threw a couple of garlic in there that were growing in my pantry. And I just, you know, cast the husk off. Stuck them in there about an inch deep and boom. This is, uh, this is two days growth. This was a green nub about this tall. <laughs> um, the peas are the overall winner. They're crazy. They're already about a third to 50% their way up the lattice here. They're going nuts. Going nuts and loving it. Um, so I'd say snow peas. I can't remember which variety is which. These are sugar and one is mammoth. I don't remember which, but one variety is much slower, although I'd say it's just as hardy. It has, you know, just as many leaves on it. It just looks shorter and a little more dense, but it already has its little, you know, split feelers uh, out. <clears throat> and that's, that's good, too. Uh, my broccoli is doing well. Each sprout has split into two. And I am also, from the same seed stock, and I've got some in some yogurt cups here when I transferred them to the hydrogen to measure, to be able to measure how well things are going. You can see those are two summer squash or zucchinis, and then you can see the one in the grow bed. They have the same number of leaves. This one's a little bit shorter. And because it's in the grow bed, I don't get to rotate it. I've been rotating the ones in the yogurt cups. Uh, red cabbage is doing okay. Uh, I don't think these this lettuce is going to make it. Um, fish are doing very well. Water's clear. Uh, no problems at all. I have noticed the catfish are quirky. Um, the fish, the goldfish used to all hang out under the, the pump when I <clears throat> initially put them in here. But since the channel catfish have uh, been introduced in here, there's three of them and they're all under that pump. Must be lengthwise because they're, they're a little bit larger than that goldfish right there. The, the large two goldfish right there. Channel cats are bigger. Those are the ones that I had, the goldfish from my old uh, aquarium. And the catfish seem to be a night feeders. They don't come out during the day. But in the evening, when I, I've been feeding two times a day, I have a large can of 
tetram and goldfish flakes left over from my aquarium. So I did, oh, there's one. There's a cat. There is a catfish right there. He came out. And he's back under. When they feed, they, they seem to be antisocial, and the goldfish also seem to be uh, keeping their distance. They started schooling after I introduced the, the catfish into the tank. Um, I mean, I, I'm fully aware that the goldfish will probably eventually become a little protein snack for the catfish, which is fine. Um, but it's just interesting to see these things firsthand. Also, the, the catfish, <clears throat> catfish are not bottom feeders. If I sprinkle flakes on the top, they come up and they're like jaws. They're, they just, they, they're very aggressive. They're much stronger swimmers than goldfish. Um, they'll actually just scoop the food. They, they come up to the surface and they just like do this circular pattern. They just scoop everything up like a vacuum cleaner with their head you know, halfway out of the water, and I've actually seen them take the food literally out of the mouths of the other fish. Um, so, I also have been trying to overfeed a little bit just to get the levels going. Um, because I've been monitoring the, the level, the monas and, and all that, and I've had zero change since day one. So, there's a kitty. Kitty catfish. They're really cool. They remind me of those um, those weasel. Did anybody ever saw uh, Stephen King's Dreamcatcher? They they remind me of those weasel things uh, that the alien would put inside of people. But anyway, I mean, just the way they act and swim. That's just my cuckoo aside there. Oh yeah, another thing. I finished my. My bells, both bells are now two inches in diameter because, like I said, they're flawless. Uh, they never have a constant run state. So I'd like to point out, I think it was Offman. I was watching some of his vids, and he does a bell, or his, his bell has this um, hole saw look to it, and it seems simple enough to me. So what I did was, this is three-quarter inch, uh, whole uh, Forstner bit, two pipe. I needed to make two of them, so I I measured out the length of the pipe. It was nine and a quarter inches. Put three quarter inch. I made these blue lines by putting a zip tie on there, tight, and then you just trace the band of the zip tie, and that gave me my two marks on other each side of the pipe. And then I just went around. And you can see the last hole you know, gives a couple of standoffs, but these, these have been working awesome. And I'd also, as long as I'm, I couldn't show this in my bell siphon troubleshooting video, but I can now because I got this little piece of 12 gauge Romex here that I can just stick under the lip of the bell. Um, I've also started a new chart for water level, because I seem to be missing, I, I seem to be using a lot more water than I thought I would. Um, this is supposed to, this sort of system is supposed to only take 10% of the normal water yield that um, soil based crops do. Anyway, <clears throat> what I did was I put a, a low water mark and a, and a high water mark. Now, those are the operational low and high of the grow bed. And so what I do is, when I do my pH testing, I uh, this is a regular pair of pliers, and I'm going to pull the standpipe out of the bushing. Let's see, <clears throat> that blade fitting in there is a is a male threaded fitting that goes into the bulkhead adapter, and it you can see that it's at a low tide. Uh, equilibrium right now and with both of them out and I let it go that'll give me my high water mark because the grow beds will both be empty and be high water on the on the fish tank and then I'm gonna need this and then what I do to get the other measurement 
is I put the standpipe back in. It's just a slip bushing. Make sure it's seated. And then I let the water fill to where it just passes over without the bell in. And in both grow bed, that'll give me the other line. <clears throat> and so what I can do is I can monitor how much water I'm utilizing. And then I can fill in some water uh, when it gets low. Like earlier today, I was about this much down uh, during my low water mark test. So I fill it in these buckets and I keep a chart of it to be able to see uh, how much water I'm consuming. All right, I ran way over, so that's the status. Everything's looking good and growing and happy, so that's cool. All right, bye.